Hello and welcome to Mojato on Art. Tonight's episode brings you an art explosion exclusive to the world of contemporary art. We will make a visit to the most happening exhibition in the capital and meet some of the most popular contemporary artists of India, Mr. Jitesh Kalat and Cherry P.S. We will also see what's new on Mojato.com. So stay tuned. This is Mojato on Art. The Delhi Contemporary Art Exhibit kicked off last week, consolidating some of the most diverse ideas, mediums and perceptions on one platform. All of this was made possible after the six biggest gallery owners of Delhi came together to organize the first ever Contemporary Art Exhibit of India. We met with these gallerists to find out the story behind their collaboration and also the objective of this ritzy event. Hosted by Saffron Art, the exhibition was a careful attempt at attracting a wider audience. People are interested in art. They want to see, they want to learn. But given our daily lives, it's so busy, the traffic is crazy, distances in Delhi have become insane. We thought if they can't come to us, why not bring art to them? And uh, that's why six galleries got together under one roof over a weekend in the center of town so we can take art to, art to the people. Whenever there are big, large public exhibitions that happen, except for very few spaces, everybody kind of uh, focuses on the more established and the modern masters and things like that. So, so there, there's always this very little niche space that is left to contemporary art, especially in our country, where art in any case is so limited. The reason why we did it also was because we really wanted to push the contemporary market and you know, have everyone come into one venue to see contemporary art, otherwise it's always been a mix. Contemporary artwork can at times be confusing at the first glance but more than often they represent compelling ideas drawn from real-life incidents and notions. Bangladeshi artist Taiba Begum Lipi's The Stolen Dream displays a pram made using sparkling razor blades which is symbolic of the razors used by midwives during childbirth in rural Bangladesh. Taiba being one of the older ones, she saw the birth of her siblings and the midwives there in Bangladesh would use razor blades for delivery. Mm. So of course that's a very dangerous medium to mm. use for delivery and that's how she was inspired by the medium and now she uses it in her works. Yeah. Despite being abundantly ingenious in its thought and design, contemporary artists are at times overshadowed. And when you do something like an art fair, um, it's also limiting because there's such an overdose of art there, right? You know, there's so much to see and then the eye obviously gets attracted to what is loud and what is gimmicky and what is bright and, you know, and, uh, and if there's a modern master like Hussein next to where you're exhibiting a very young artist with minimal practice, you know, it just gets overshadowed. It's not about better or worse, it's about doing more. This is like a mid-season pop-up. We of course have the India Art Fair that happens every January and February. So, but this is like six months from that, right? So this is just creating that buzz about art mid-season. And hopefully we can continue yes. with it year after year. So that you know there is not a lull after the fair. So it's like it's been like this fair, then a lull, lull for the whole year, the and then yeah, and then again the fair creates this buzz. With more than 150 pieces on display, the exhibition offered a niche zone for many emerging artists. By bringing buyers, collectors and art lovers under one roof, the exhibition thrived with new possibilities for these artists. The more people that see an artist's work, 
the more people get to know about it and that's great for the artist right at the end of the day the artists are trying to sort of put their voices out there through their work and the more people they reach uh, with that purpose it's great for them and for us triumphant afternoon indeed for the contemporary art community of Delhi. All our galleries, like these galleries in Lado Sarai, in New Friends Colony, in Niti Bag, and all of these galleries are really far away. So something a few of the guests actually came up and told me was that it's so good, all of these galleries in one place and we can experience it all at once. It has been a wonderful experience actually to spend time with all your contemporaries, my contemporaries like the gallerists as well as the collectors because in the end it's a very small community and uh, I do hope that we can do this more often at least once a year. It is now time to meet one of the most prominent contemporary artists of India, Jitesh Kala. He was born in Mumbai and his art reflects a deep connection to the city. Although his immediate surroundings also play a major role in designing the visual language of his pieces. So let's meet the man who gives the oppressed a bold and colourful twist. Jitesh Kalat began his art career at Sir JJ School of Art 25 years ago and quickly made his mark as an artist to watch catching the eye of Mumbai's famous Kimold Gallery. So when I first went to the studio, uh, you know, and uh, there, were, uh, there was an exhibition ready, I felt like he was 20 or 21. I thought, you know, he's too young. I'm, not, I'm, I'm doing a studio visit, but I'm not going to show him just yet. But, but there was like no just yet or not with Jitish, because, you know, Jitish is very clear about his path. And, uh, I realized that if I walk out the studio and don't say yes to the show right here and now, you know, another gallery is very, very quickly going to pick him up. Jitish was discovered by Peter as a gallery artist when Peter, who's started in Nature Mod, um, saw Jitish's first show in Bombay at Kemold. And he knew that he definitely wanted to work with him. And he also knew that uh, he was seeing the emergence of a star. Since then, he has established himself as one of the finest and most imaginative contemporary artists working today. His work, which shifts seamlessly from medium to medium, melds his personal history with that of the cosmos, and they come together in fascinating ways. You know, one of the sort of persistent thoughts that preoccupy me you know, whether I'm in the studio making work or not, is this consistent shift between objects we hold, things we touch and feel, and how they can sort of depart from the object that we're holding into maybe some other dimension of space-time. Such as his public notice series, which is not quite sculpture, not quite painting. These works recreate famous speeches from Indian history, including Nehru's Midnight Speech and Gandhi's Salt March. In epilogue, Kalat reimagines the phases of the moon as a roti, and 2,500 of these come together to represent the life cycle of his father. It's every moon that my father saw since the day he was born on 2nd April 1936 until he passed away on 2nd of December 1998. And every moon in this instance is also a meal because every moon then morphs with the image of a roti. And what one sees is what appears like a self-similar, ever-recurrent, eternally repeating set of lunar cycles. But no two moons are the same, as no two meals are the same, no two nights are the same. Today, Kalat's work is on view at the National Gallery of Modern Art in New Delhi, which is hosting a mid-career retrospective of the artist's two decades of work. It is a massive, audacious exhibition on display until 14th March. The show is curated by renowned curator Catherine David. It's one of the uh, very uh, 
powerful artist and really able to keep uh, tension between, let's say, what you could call very fast the kind of visibility of the uh, 90s and on because it's still working and a very uh, strong idiosyncrasy to the uh, Indian uh, momentum. But Jitish finds connections between the cosmos and the ordinary. And the joy of seeing his work is discovering these contradictions in action. The show served as a coming together of sorts of two decades of work by Kalat, which have since been scattered around the world. A lot of his works, like in all great artists, leave the country, never to return again, or are shown in major museums around the world. And you can see one at one time and the second at the second time, but together, this is quite rare. I mean, I think this exhibition is, is really a time for even somebody like me who's so familiar with his work, for it to come together as like one story. So I, despite the fact that, that, you know, he may have these varying kind of scales and, and medium, it's always this one thing that he comes back to. I think having a go at that, what we do not know and what we may not know, uh, sometimes resets the stories we tell, tell ourselves. And uh, that's something that happens quite frequently in my work. It's really trying to sort of move into spaces that, where one absolutely doesn't know anything. <laughs>